Hey guys, welcome to IMG Doctor. This video is a continuation of the syncope cluster and uh, today we are going to discuss few more cases under this topic. So let's start with our first case. So we have a 72 year old lady with a history of loss of consciousness. She is otherwise healthy. So your task is to take history, PFI, diagnosis and differentials. So here the positive finding is that the patient had loss of consciousness yesterday and it was of less than one minute and this is her third time and it happened when she was gardening and she felt uh, her heart pounding the day before so a history of palpitation here but there is no chest pain and no shortness of breath and she's not taking any other medications and on physical examination the pulse is regular there is no postural drop and on cardiovascular examination there's a finding of ejection systolic murmur and the diagnosis here is aortic stenosis so guys this is a recall so the stem and the findings are obviously incomplete so you should be expecting other positive findings in the exam uh, but the goal of going through a recall is that uh, we now know that there's a case of aortic stenosis for AMC exam and we also have an idea about the clinical scenario and uh, the few positive findings that will ultimately help us diagnose a case of aortic stenosis. Now for the approach of this case, I recommend you guys to go through my previous video where I have discussed in detail about how to approach a case of a syncope. Uh, so you can uh, apply the same question format for history taking here and uh, basically you start by asking the hemodynamic stability here because you have got some uh, potentially life-threatening conditions in your differential diagnosis of syncope like seizure, hyperglycemia, uh, transient uh, ischemic attack and aortic stenosis. Uh, then you move on to history of presenting illness uh, where you want to ask about loss of consciousness. So you ask uh, all the questions so that you can uh, find out what happened before, during and after the event. Then uh, you need to ask specific questions that will help you rule out your differential diagnosis. And uh, when you ask about the cardiac symptoms, you can get some positive findings there for aortic stenosis. Um, because we've got a triad uh, for aortic stenosis that is syncope, exertional dyspnea, and angina. Uh, so don't please do not forget to ask about these symptoms. Then uh, we move on to physical examination. So here you need to ask about pulse um, uh, and its regularity in BP. Uh, look for any hypertension, any postural drop. Uh, also examine the car for carotid brewery and do a detailed cardiovascular system examination. And like in this case, whenever you get a positive um, finding for murmur, you need to ask about the site, the intensity, radiations, timing, and response to um, maneuvers for the particular murmur. Uh, we also have a case of erotic stenosis in the handbook. Uh, I just want to briefly go through it. So the question here is, you are working in a general practice. Your next patient is a 52-year-old technician who is consulting you about recent transient loss of consciousness. So your task here is to take a history from the patient, uh, ask the examiner for the findings of the focused physical examination you would perform, uh, tell examiner your diagnosis and the reason for this. So one thing that I want to add uh, here is that in AMC, you'll always be talking uh, and explaining the diagnosis and differential to the patient and not to the examiner. Uh, there are very few cases where you need to explain or, you know, uh, interpret the findings, graphs and chart to the examiner. But most of the time, it's always with the role player. Uh, moving on, the next task is to indicate to the patient how you would proceed your further assessment of his condition. So in this case, your positive finding is that you have loss of consciousness, which is sudden uh, while playing tennis yesterday. There was no warning signs and this is the first attack. Then there's no palpitations, but there's a history of shortness of breath, which happened while playing. And uh, there's no shortness of uh, breath while lying down or at night. So no orthopnea, no uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. And the patient also complains of muscle soreness in your chest while playing, uh, which he noticed over recent months. 
So as you can see, they have given very typical findings for uh, aortic stenosis. Uh, we can see the classical triad here, that is loss of consciousness, shortness of breath, and chest pain on exertion. Uh, and one more thing here is that there is no warning signs, uh, which is again something that uh, suggests a cardiac syncope. Uh, and whereas if it was a vasovagal syncope, you could expect some prodromal symptoms like lightheadedness, nausea, and uh, tinnitus. So moving on, uh, in physical examination, when you ask for auscultation of neck, you'll get a systolic brewery uh, over both carotid arteries at the base of neck, which is loudest on right side. And on cardiovascular examination, you'll get e ejection systolic murmur of uh, 3 by 6 intensity and that is best heard over aortic area. So we've gone through the recall and the handbook case for aortic stenosis. Uh, it's quite similar. So now we have an idea about what to ask in the history and PFE that will help us come to a diagnosis. And the very important thing here is that these findings will never be given voluntarily by the role player. You need to ask them specifically. So now moving on, how do you explain uh, a case of aortic stenosis to the patient? Uh, so you can start by telling them, you know, based on the history and physical examination, most likely you're having a condition called aortic stenosis. Then use the pen and paper that's given in the exam uh, to draw a simple picture of heart. And uh, then you can uh, explain the basic anatomy. Like this is the heart, uh, it has four chambers, the two upper chambers, the two lower chambers. And the right side of the heart, it pumps blood into the lungs. And the left side of the heart, it pumps blood uh, into a large vessel uh, called aorta through an opening called aortic valve. And in your case, uh, this aortic valve is narrowed, making it harder for the heart to pump blood. And this is why your brain is receiving less blood and you're having fainting episodes. Um, then in differential diagnosis, make sure you mention all the different causes of syncope and also hyperglycemia, seizure and TIA. Uh, then uh, if management is a task, uh, mention the investigations like blood tests, chest x-ray, ECG and echo. So ECG, it's done for any arrhythmias, or thickening of the left ventricle and echo is done for assessing the functioning of aortic valve and of left ventricle. Then the important thing here is that you need to refer the patient to the cardiologist and tell the patient that uh, he will be assessing you and will decide the treatment based on the investigation findings. Then uh, for treatment of aortic stenosis, it's usually, you know, in asymptomatic and mild cases, uh, there will be regular monitoring. And for moderate to severe cases, uh, you need to admit the patient and the patient may be planned uh, for a surgery to replace or repair the valve. And uh, finally, mention about the lifestyle modifications such as maintaining physical activity while avoiding hard physical exercises, control of weight and avoidance of smoking. Now moving on to next case, we have a um, 17 year old girl who fainted while attending a horse parade. It was witnessed by her friends. So the task is to take history, uh, ask PFI, give diagnosis and differentials. So here the positive finding is that the fainting, it happened for uh, around 30 seconds while watching horse parade. There was history of lightheadedness and the patient recovered immediately. And the rest of the history uh, will be normal. And even the physical examination here will be normal. So this is a case of vasovagal syncope. And usually in these cases, you, know, you always get some sort of triggers in the history. Like uh, it could be standing for long periods of time, heat exposure, overcrowding, sight of blood or extreme emotional stress. And in this case, as the patient was attending a horse parade, probably there is some history of prolonged standing or overcrowding or exposure to hot environment. And uh, although it's not mentioned in this recall, you have to uh, find these triggers. So now, uh, how do you explain vasovagal syncope to the patient? Now, uh, start by saying, you know, based on history and examination, most likely you're having a condition called vasovagal syncope. Uh, and what's happening here is that uh, the body responds in an abnormal manner to certain triggers. 
uh, like in this case you can say prolonged standing and that will cause a drop in the heart rate and blood pressure which will eventually lead to a lack of blood flow to the brain and this will result in fainting. So for differential diagnosis, it's similar to the previous case. So make sure that you rule out all other causes of syncope in history and PFI uh, before you diagnose a case of vasovagal syncope. If management is a task, so here for vasovagal syncope, uh, usually the treatment is not required, but you need to provide a lot of reassurance to the patient that it's a harmless condition and you can advise on avoiding triggers such as prolonged standing, uh, drinking plenty of fluids, and if the patient ever feels like uh, he or she might faint, then advise the patient to lie down and lift their legs. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope it was useful. Uh, thank you so much for watching.